Okay, continuing over here in the Orchus Yoish, as he speaks about the incumbents of a person coming to shul, the, the optimal place for us to daven is in the shul in the Beis HaKnesses together with its seaborn. He brings down over here a frightening story. In the Sefer Hasidim, it's brought down the following. A person should not leave the Beis HaKnesses, the shul, Ad she is Saimukolatfila until all of Davening is over. I think most people don't know about this halach over here. The Sefer Chasidim says that a person should not leave Shul until Davening is actually over. Over means when the last Kaddish is said after the Shir Shalyun. Davening is then over at that point. So why not? So he writes, Elim Kain Sarch Linikovov Oilahaki. Unless there's two reasons that you have to leave. Either you have to go to the restroom, which a person is not allowed to daven when they have to go to the restroom, so you can leave, then of course come back. Or if a person gets very sick in the middle of davening and they have to vomit and throw up, he writes, Save a chassidim, you can leave for that reason as well. But if it's because the phone call came in, or because you're getting tired of how long chazor hashatz is, or you're thinking about how much work you have to get to today, or your stomach is grumbling and growling and you want to get to breakfast, those are not the reasons that the Sefer Hasidim says you're allowed to leave davening early. Umaisa, now listen to this Maisa, this Hafladiga Maisa this story brings down. Umaisa bizkena achas, a story with an elderly woman. Shaisa magdemis tefillah, she always came early to shul, she was always there for davening, a woman. A woman always came to shul to daven in the Beis Agnesis. She had a lot of maizim toivim. She did a lot of good deeds. Chesed, tzedakah. She probably was on the sisterhood and she baked for the, for the kiddush. She was a, a righteous woman. Le'acha maisa, after she died, she came in a dream to some very righteous people of that, of that town in that generation. Amrullah, they said to her, Ma'at ba'isa olam. You know, you were such a tzaddikis in this world. You came early to davening every day. You were filled with maizim toivim. You did so much chesed. You took care of the poor and the yisayimim and everything. Tell us, dear lady, what is it like for you in the world to come? What's your level? What's your status over there? Amrulam, so she told them the following. Makin oisi bedinim gedolim. I'm getting whacked with horrible judgments over here. I look around and I see many other tzaddikim, many other tzidkanios, righteous women, they're all reveling in simcha and joy in the world to come. When they see me, they send me away. They don't want me to be around them. The Omran, she said, what's the reason? I was a good lady in this world. I came to davening. She does not hive to come to the minion. She came to the minion every single day and she came early. She did my sim toivim. So why are they treating me so harsh in that world? When I was alive, when the Chazar Sashats would take place and they would get to Kedusha, Kadosh, 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 I'd already walked out of the Beis HaKnesses. I was already preparing the cakes for the Kiddush. I was already busy getting the kids off to school. I was already busy doing other things. And I would not wait with everybody else until it was time to leave the shul at the end of davening. Take a look over there in the Sefer Chassidim. Go home tonight, open up your Sefer Chassidim, and you'll take a look at the rest of the story. Rabbi Isa, you understand what the story is? An elderly woman who's not obligated to come to shul and down with a minion. She came early before everybody else. She was a life filled with maizim toivim, good deeds, chesed, sedaka, yiroshimayim, sneos, everything we can imagine. But she left the Beis Hagneses early. She wasn't there for Kedusha. And she wasn't there when everybody else was leaving. She had already gone long before that. Because of that, she showed a disrespect to the davening, to the Beis Hagneses, to the Shekhinah, which is here. She was punished in the world to come. Al achas kama v'kama, all the more so for a man that has, is mechuyiv to be here, obligated to be with a minion, obligated to be in the basic nesses, and he runs out early. 
He's got so much that he has to do that day. You don't have time for Hashem and the Shekhinah. You, who's making your parnasa anyway? Who is bringing the refuah anyway? Who is taking care of the children anyway? Hatzal. Yeah, who's taking care of it anyway? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is. If that's the case, if you run out on Hashem early, so then Hashem says, so you don't need me. Take care of yourself. Like it says in the Chayvaz Nevavaz, in the Shara B'Tachin, if you put your trust in me, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I see that you rely upon me, then I'm here for you, I'll take good care of you. I'll take care of all of your needs. But if you put your faith and your trust in Basav Adam and people of flesh and blood, you trust them, they'll take care of the job, they'll take care of the refuah, they'll take care of the shidduch and everything else. Hashem says, you don't need me. If you don't need me, let them take care of you. And they can't. A person that's running out of shul in those opportune times when the tzibah is together and we're proclaiming our allegiance to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we're staying till the end because, like I said, nobody leaves the game early. Nobody leaves the movie early. Nobody leaves the, the, the grand seven-course dinner early. They stay till the very end. The, they can't even breathe anymore by the time they're walking out of the restaurant. I had a cousin, Rene Brank. He used to love to daven. And he told me that sometimes he put in so much energy into his davening that when he would come home, from davening, he would drag his legs into the house and he would plop down on the couch like this and his wife would say, what's the matter with you? He would say, I just daven so much. I push it, I simply don't have kaychas, I have no energy left right now, I need to rest. Nobody loses their energy davening. Nobody breaks a sweat on their brow. Says the Sefer Hasidim, stay till the end, you have so much to end. Again, uh, sometimes... There are extenuating circumstances. A person has to run out early. There are extenuating circumstances. But a person should make the best effort possible to be able to stay till the end. Rabbi Graydon tells a story of one of the Balabatim in Pico Robertson who was always on the run. He'd come in, and by the time it's Aleinu, you know he's already unwrapping the tefillin, taking off the talis, and he's out the door before Kaddish even begins. So one day he heard a shmuz, he heard a shir about the importance of staying in shul till the end of Davni. So he said, HaKadosh Baruch I'll make you a deal. The reason I run out is because I'm this big doctor and I have to make it to the office on time. So I'm always running out early, so I'll beat the traffic, I can get there before my, my patients. I'll make you a deal, Hashem. I'll stay in shul till the end of Davni. You take care of the traffic on the way to work. And lo and behold, he said with his own mouth, he said, from the moment that he began staying in shul to the end of davening, he never was late to his office. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took care of the traffic, no problem. So we stay till the end, we show our faithfulness and our allegiance to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will show his allegiance towards us. V'omru, and it says further, HaMispal Babes HaKneses, someone who davens in a shul, it's like a person has brought a, a sanctified, a pure mincha offering. And further he writes, Dirshu, like it says in the, in the Torah, like it says in the Pazik, Dirshu Hashem be matzai. You should seek out Hashem where he's going to be found. Heichanu matzai, where could you find Hashem? Where a Kodesh Baruch is in, in Tel Aviv? I don't know. He's in, he's in a shwarma ish tanor. I don't think a Kodesh Baruch is in there. Where is a Kodesh Baruch on, on your phone? He's in TikTok video number 19 that you watched today. He's in WhatsApp message number 363 that you reviewed already for the 17th time. Laughed, cackled your head off. Is that what the Baruch is not there? Where's the Rebbein Shalom? Answers Chazal Bebeis HaKneses. You want to find Hashem? He's right here. You found Him, so why would you run away? It's Hashem, we should have the patience to bear with the Zmani Atfilo. We should come on time, we should leave on time, and we should see tremendous siyata deshmai as HaKadosh Baruch accepts all of our feelings. <laughs>